United Way is one of the largest nonprofit organizations in the world, and it has more than 120 years of history and a tradition of good work that guides everyone associated with the organization. But if you think back 120 years ago, the way things were done look alien to how things work today. This is a digital world, and that carries over into the way people give back. In order to keep up with the times, United Way has recently been in the process of a major digital transformation. And in order to accomplish their digital goals, the folks in charge are relying on the Salesforce Philanthropy Cloud to make an impact. On this episode of IT Visionaries, we spoke with Ann Edmonds, the program lead for Salesforce Philanthropy Cloud at United Way, and William Browning, the Chief Strategy and Transformation Officer for United Way, and they discussed everything involved in the transformation, why Salesforce Philanthropy Cloud has been a great partner, and what the future might hold. Enjoy this conversation. IT Visionaries is created by the team at mission.org and brought to you by the Salesforce Customer 360 platform, the number one cloud platform for digital transformation of every experience. Build connected experience, empower every employee, and deliver continuous innovation with the customer at the center of everything you do. Learn more at salesforce.com slash platform. This podcast is created by the team at mission.org. Welcome to another episode of IT Visionaries. I'm Ian Faison, host of IT Visionaries. And today we have two special guests First, William, how are you? Good morning, Ian. Happy to be here. We are happy to have you to talk about all things United Way. I'm super excited. And then we also are joined by Anne. Anne, how's it going? It's going great. Thanks for having us. Wonderful. And we're going to get into both your crews as well a little bit. So before we get started uh, into the meat of our, our program today, uh, I want to hear how you both got started in technology. So Anne, let's go first with you. How I got started is kind of an accident, actually. I was uh, graduated from university and sort of fell into a career around business and process and uh, how technology supports that. And I've just kind of grown along the way uh, into the role that I'm in now, working with nonprofits my whole career and just around how we can use technology to further our work. And William, what about you? It's funny. I um, I was an English major from the University of New Mexico, which seems like a pretty uh, far off place from technology. But when I came to um, D.C. in 1993, I started attending all these information superhighway meetings at the White House that the Al Gore was conducting. They were free of charge and I would sneak down from my business um, that I was working at the time. And I really quickly realized the transformative case for the internet technology that was blossoming at that point in time. And I was one of the first people um, in the DC market to actually convert a government services contractor to Gopher back then, and, and then obviously the web uh, in the, you know, at that time. So for me, it's, it's been a long love affair with technology as a way to enable and uh, expedite business um, principles, and, and especially a nonprofit where it can have such a tremendous impact on mobilizing people to action. No kidding. That's pretty, that's pretty wild. What were those early sessions like? They were fascinating. You had um, leaders of, I think Al Gore did a pretty good job of putting together people in the White House and, and had all these CM, CEOs of different companies talking about the technology and the, the potential future capabilities of it. And so for me, it was, it was inspiring to be uh, a fly on the wall listening to these discussions. And then, but more importantly, be able to practically take what they were looking at and identifying uh, and putting into real world. You know, the government contractor at the time I worked with at the time was a, they distributed um, materials over um, hard copy. And so I was able to really quickly convert those hard copies electronic and change the whole way we did uh, warehousing, significantly reducing our costs while expediting delivery. Um, it was a transformative shift in our entire business model. But it was fascinating. Those days were really exciting when you were, we were building out the internet capabilities of the uh, at that time. And it seems like that thread of transformation has kind of followed you kind of throughout your career. Can you share a little bit about what your role is at, at United Way currently? So I'm fortunate to serve the United Way at, in the capacity um, I'm responsible for ensuring that the United Way as a global organization, we, you know, we're about $5 billion across 80 countries and about between 1,600 and 6, 1,650 locations around the planet, depending on how you count. My role is to ensure that that we adopt the new way of doing business in a digital world, meaning that we we move away from our traditional model, which has been 
uh, showing up at workplaces once a year and doing a campaign to really engaging with people more on their terms. Uh, and we can talk more about this in our conversation, but um, my job is to make sure that we are uh, adopting those new technologies and capabilities and processes and really transforming the way we do business to one of um, a much more, I would say, intimate um, relationship with our donors and away from transactional. And Ian, what about you? I actually come from a local United Way, the United Way of Greater Toronto. And uh, I was responsible for IT and operations there. And that United Way was on this journey with United Way Worldwide, looking at how can we change the way that we interact with our corporate partners and our individual donors. And so we became a member of what we now call digital services at, at United Way Worldwide. And that led into the development of Salesforce Philanthropy Cloud. And I, uh, I was really interested in that particular part of the transformation of how we can really change the way that we work with both our corporate partners and their employees. And so I just became engaged with that work. And now my, my role is to interface between corporate partners, individuals, local United Ways, and Salesforce to ensure that the platform is doing uh, what we need it to do to actually move the work forward. Yeah, and what are some examples of that? Because obviously, I mean, you have such uh, an enormous kind of responsibility there. Like how does... Uh you know, and obviously Salesforce is the amazing sponsor of the show, um, but I, we, we haven't had a ton of folks on talking about philanthropy, cloud, and, and kind of hearing the other side of that. Yeah, so, you know, philanthropy cloud is really a way for us to change the dynamic of how we're working with our corporate partners. So companies are looking to change the way that they're working locally. They, they care about their local communities. They want to be doing good. They need to engage their employees differently than they have in the past. And so they're looking to United Way to help them reinvigorate those programs. And part of the way that we do that is through Philanthropy Cloud, which is this technology platform that brings together the individuals, the corporations, and our nonprofit partners all in one place so that you know, the goal is that individuals can find the causes that they can, that they care about, that they can connect with them, volunteer, donate, advocate for them. And at the same time, the corporations can use the platform to really promote uh, their social responsibility objectives and bring their employees to, to those causes. So it's all powered by United Way. We're behind the scenes supporting the nonprofits and who are delivering on the ground every day. So it's, it's really bringing all of those things together to really change the world. That's awesome. So what is, and, and William, maybe you can answer this. What is like the scope of United Way? Like how big is the organization? What's kind of the size of, of the issues that you are solving? Um, you know, obviously the, the organization is, ex is really old and has done a ton of work, but I, I don't know if everyone knows kind of the scope of, of what you all do. Well, we were founded, you know, in a very set of guiding principles around um, making sure everybody succeeds in the community. We, you know, we were founded way back in Denver, Colorado, about 133 years ago around the principle of religious leaders at that time coming together and actually putting their religious interests aside for the greater collective good. And that's, that's been the formulation of United Way at the, at the foundation of United Way has been this nonpartisan and non-specific issue driven, but really how do we best solve the problems facing the community? So currently we are right around $5 billion. We have about uh, 1,600 locations around the planet serving 80 different countries, um, 40, sorry, 40 different countries. We are really uh, focused on three major pillars, so to speak, around financial well well-being, education, and health. And when we talk about this, we really try to make sure the markets are, they're actually meeting the demands of their market as they see fit. So we are a federation. Most people don't know this. So you think about United Way, we have 33,000 board members serving the organization because each United Way locally has its own charter, its own, its own, um, wow. guiding, yeah, right. So when you think about transformation, this makes it really challenging because, um, we can't just command and control and tell the local markets, Hey, you got to do this. We've got to actually work with them and inspire them, influence them, and then guide them along the way. So it creates a really unique transformational uh, dynamic. But we're, you know, we're, we're a very large organization, but we're, we operate um, in a way that we don't necessarily bring that scale to bear. And that's one of the things we're doing in the transformation is how do you harness all this local power uh, at a global level to really have a better impact for the community and for our corporate and individual customers? 
That's incredible. Yeah. To have that much, um, you know, local impact on the ground has got to be an extremely challenging thing because each, you know, geographic location is completely different and, you know, each, uh, each director on, on the ground there. And also, you know, with so many stakeholders and, and data points, it, it seems like it could be a, a technology nightmare. How have you looked at kind of your own digital transformation? Well, I think Ann was alluding to this earlier, but when we think about this, it's really about um, how do we actually meet the demands in, of our customer a little bit differently and, and solve problems within the community. So it, first of all, we drive with impact. It's really about how do we actually implement solutions that are going to change the game for entire communities at large. And we're not, you know, we're not a point solution. We don't, you know, we don't, run food banks or run schools, what we really do is understand the complex issues facing a community and really rally the political, the nonprofit, and the business partners together. So when I think about digital transformation, the United Way's history has always been pretty well anchored in workplace giving. We would show up to a company, usually in the fall, and recruit people to give payroll deductions for uh, the United Way. And the United Way would distribute those funds uh, into the community. What's changed, as you know, is that with mobile technology and digital technology, the demands of the millennial and the younger generation have changed quite a bit from this model, which was, you know, well, highly uh, embraced by the boomer and generations beforehand to one where people want choice. They want to be able to give when they want. They want to give year round. They want a higher value. In addition to that, our corporate clients are looking for solutions that improve recruitment and retention, uh, improve revenue, improve partnerships, improve their brand reputation. So for us, digital transformation is understanding how we actually provide our corporate customers with better capabilities, such as Salesforce, Philanthropy Cloud, at the same time reaching into the lives of our donors, understanding what they want, how they want it, when they want it, where they want it, and actually making sure we give a, build a very intimate experience with them. I mean, we talk about our role really is how do we mobilize the caring power of community? And it starts with um, making sure we can actually connect, inspire, uh, inform, and mobilize people to the causes they care about. So that's that's the, the core of it. And then underneath that all, the data is the critical asset. And so when I think about digital transformation, I always say that digital transformation is, is largely around data. Are we gathering data on how to improve community solutions? Are we gathering data for our companies that allows them to be better community stewards? Are we gathering data on uh, about our individuals that allows them to engage uh, and give most effectively to the community at large. So that's that's a long-winded answer to a very complex problem, but it's, it's a, you know, this is the revolution of the United Way from transaction to strategic, and it's an exciting time to be at the United Way. Yeah, and you have some really cool partnerships and things like, obviously, with, with uh, Salesforce.org, but also with, um, like, the NFL and all sorts of organizations like that. Can you share a little bit about how kind of partnership you know, works and how, how that can help to evangelize what you all are doing? Well, I think the power of United Way is that, you know, with the community in mind, we can bring unusual partners together to solve problems. So especially on the corporate side. So yeah, we have our NFL relationship, but I would, I would look to relationships we've built in the last five years that really have been exciting. So one is obviously salesforce.org, the ability for us to leverage the best of breed technology company with the best of breed community impact. It's the perfect partnership to really re-visual, re, re-envision, re-imagine community philanthropy and, and engage people very differently in a marketplace approach. But on top of that, we have partnerships with uh, companies like Lyft, uh, where we're uh, engaging them to help solve the transportation issues that a lot of our constituents face in communities around the country through our two-on-one system. We're engaging Kellogg's on how to basically help un- end hunger or mitigate hunger. Uh, we're working with Starbucks uh, to leverage their stores for community outreach. So it's really thinking through creatively um, how United Way can broker the best impact solutions with the highest performing partners. And then our motto is simple. We're really trying to figure out how to help our customers and our community be successful. So when we stand at this unique intersection of political, business, and nonprofit, and we're really the trusted broker to make sure that uh, strategic partnerships are developed in a way that everybody wins. And that's what I think is most exciting about building partnerships through United Way. Well, and I think that those type of partnerships are so cool because so many of those are not digital in nature, but can have such a greater impact with technology. Like you think about you now the physical footprint of, of Starbucks or, you know, the, the massive presence that the NFL has 
or the, you know, the way that Lyft has a massive presence now. All of those organizations have a bunch of built-in things that you can layer on, you know, experiences and awareness and all of that. But you can also layer on technology. So, and I'm curious, how did you look at the implementation of Philanthropy Cloud to look at your processes, to streamline processes, uh, to create a better overall experience for, you know, both folks internally and externally? I think the the first thing that we had to do was put both the the corporate partner and the their employees at the center. So starting with them, what what is the company trying to accomplish uh, through their strategies, and then how can we support that happening on the ground? So really focusing in on what are the things that matter to them, and then what are the things that matter to their employees? You know, with five different generations in the workplace now. We have, to, we have to work differently. We have to present ourselves differently. So we really focused in on what is that experience for the end user, for the employee in the workplace. So when they, when they come into the platform, they're going to see both what their company is promoting as part of their social responsibility, but also what are the things that are recommended to them based on their causes, the things that they've done, their skills, uh, what they've supported in the past. So we're really trying to marry those two things together, but it's been quite the transformation for United Way, who has you know, traditionally had that focus, as William says, on the, on the two-week campaign in the fall to really year-round engagement. And what does engagement mean? It could be anything from signing a petition to uh, volunteering down at the food bank, um, so it's it's bringing all of those pieces together, and it's really challenged us to to retool the whole organization, not around an annual campaign, but around year round giving and year round engagement. So we're looking for different ways to engage with people, to connect with them. Uh, you know, you don't just hear from United Way once a year anymore. Uh, now, once you've once you've made a connection with us, we're going to engage with you at a frequency that makes sense for you in the channels that make sense for you. So that's been part of the transition that we've been going through is figuring out how do we move from, from the old, uh, we kind of, it's kind of like the manufacturing line uh, of the old United Way to this new always on evergreen agile organization. Yeah. Walk me through what that looks like for one of your you know, partner organizations, because like, I know, um, you know, I have a bunch of friends at Salesforce, obviously, and like, I know how they've been using it internally for years, because I have friends that do a bunch of different things. But, you know, for for a different company, you know, if you're an employee, you know, producer Hillary out there, um, how would she engage with this at her company? Like, what what does that look like? The beauty of it is it's going to look different at every company and for every individual in those companies. So uh, we're able to really tailor the experience to, to the company and have the platform reflect their branding, their, their objectives, and their, their culture. So I think uh, one of my best days was when someone at a company said, you know, this thing is fantastic because all of our employees are really feeling our organization's culture. And you can go down the street to the next company and they're saying the same thing in very different organizations with very different cultures and things that they are are working towards. So our first approach with the company is what are you trying to achieve? Do you want, are you looking for more volunteerism from your employees? Are you looking for them to increase giving? Which of the sustainable development goals are you most affiliated with? So we really have an open conversation with them about what are they trying to accomplish? And then we can bring the United Way to bear on that with, you know, the work that we do and the agencies that we, the nonprofits that we partner with to really make it come to life for them. But we really work with the company around what are they trying to accomplish? And so we can set up the platform to to reflect uh, their goals. And then we have, you know, a year round calendar with them of, you know, Women's International Day is coming up. So there's a lot of activity around that, that we can produce content and put it in the hands of the company so they can leverage it without having to do any additional work. And so we can really tailor that to what they're trying to accomplish and, and support it by the work that we do. So it's a, it's a year round calendar of activities that we're promoting. And then from the individual perspective, once they engage, we can take them on their individual journey through 
uh, different content through, we, you know, we have user journeys that we bring them along, automated email campaigns um, that they can participate in to really see what's happening, you know, once they've made a donation, what's happening with that money, what's the difference that's happening in the community. So we can tie all of those things together using the technology. So does the corporation choose like, hey, these are the six nonprofits that we're going to be working with. And then, you know, those folks can plug in by, you know, volunteering time or, or giving or something like that? Or is it like the person individually chooses? How does that work? The company can choose if, if that's what they want to do. Some companies want to have very focused campaigns around at different times of the year, supporting specific nonprofits. So they can do that uh, as well. The employee can, can support those campaigns or they can support any, any of the causes in the platform, um, just through their own giving, they can find, you know, find those things that they care about and really engage with them. So there's volunteer opportunities from all kinds of organizations. There's story content so that you can find out what's happening. Uh, and there's always the option to give as well. So it's really both. The individual employee can focus in on something that they, that they really care about and they can also engage in what their company is doing. That's awesome. That's so cool. It seems like this is such a kind of radical departure from where we were a long time ago with a lot of the personalized journeys and things like that, obviously. But just in the way that companies can have like a framework built in that, you know, when they work with you all, that there's kind of a method to the madness. Because I think that that's one of the things that's a little scary for folks is they want to do, they want to have an impact. They want their employees to be empowered to give back. Um, and the employees want that, but there's just like a lot of confusion around it, or there just wasn't really, you know, a, f a clarity or a focus of what, of what is kind of going on. It seems like it's just kind of, you know, dawn of a new day. But for a lot of those folks, like they're in the middle of a digital transformation. How does this help kind of like streamline it for, for those organizations? Well, for us at United Way, it helps streamline the experience for our customers. So, you know, in the past, it's been largely a non-digital uh, engagement with companies to, to give it, you know, quote unquote, give it the office. So the ability for us to offer um, our companies with uh, a turnkey solution allows them to more efficiently and effectively administer philanthropy is powerful. For um, United Way, um, locally, it really helps us ease the ability for us to engage year-round. So it gives us an open platform for showcasing high-quality content and services and volunteer experiences, as Anne was outlining. And then for the local agencies, for our nonprofit partners that span the globe, it's, it's an ability for them to also showcase their ca um, content, their capabilities, you know, we're well aware at United Way with Salesforce Philanthropy Cloud, it can't be just United Way's content in the system. It's got to be um, the best of the, the, the philanthropic marketplace. So for locals, it also allows them to channel into the corporate world, which can be difficult for a lot of nonprofits to access. United Way has been very lucky. We have, you know, 66,500 and some odd companies that, that used um, our partners with United Way. And most fund profits don't have that kind of depth in corporate America. We do, but we'd like to see that depth um, increase across the across the nonprofit ecosystem. We're we really always say that we're about mobilizing humanity, and that includes in strengthening the the nonprofit ecosystem so that the best solutions are the ones that are funded and then evaluated. And we're always challenging and optimizing the sector as a whole to improve its capabilities. So you had a shift in kind of how United Way looked kind of almost from like a B2B to like a B2B to C model to allow a more direct relationship with donors. This is something that kind of we've seen across the board for uh, in technology that's been happening is most, you know, B2C users have an organization that they are a part of. So it makes sense to be able to do not just an organization, but also the person and, and kind of that go between. How do you think nonprofits can better develop a direct relationship with donors? Um, and like, and why did you all kind of make that shift? Well, I think for us, it was essential with the changing demographics, younger people are um, doing things differently. Um, the ability to be on a mobile platform versus a traditional web-based platform, I think it was critical. Um, the way our business model had worked in the past, as I mentioned, is largely was largely prescriptive. You showed up at your company and your boss uh, rallied you around the importance of giving to the United Way campaign. 
and that that approach is not working with young people the way uh, it used to. Their generations are changing. People want to have choice and want to engage as they want to, as as they feel fit. Um, so for us, it was looking at you know we have we want to do two things, and you know I have a little bit of exception with we haven't really moved to B to B to B to B to C. It's really how do we harmonize the business to business model we have now and really really provide value for companies again to recruit and retain high performing talent, improve their brand, drive revenue opportunities, build relationships, but also reach the employee as, as a consequence of that. So it's, and building relationships with consumers that are intimate and inspiring, uh, that we're, we're connecting with people in a way that, that they want to, how they want to be connected, you know, that we get the content to them that they want, when they want it and how they want it. And that's, that's really the key, the key shift for us. So it's twofold. It's enhancing the value of the relationships we have with our companies, which we're grateful for, while enhancing and building new relationships with the individuals. And I think we're, you know, to be totally op- honest and frank with you, the ability, the need for that, the imperative for that was critical. You know, the current business model for United Way to just, you know, rely on prescriptive giving is not sustainable long term. You know, I, I'm sure you could you could make an argument that. United Way has been going through a transformation for probably about the past 120 years. That's what I, I, I love about the term digital transformation is it, it's kind of never ending. But I'm curious, when you came into the role, um, how did you look at those kind of first 90 days and say, here's what we, I think we need to focus on, you know, that, that two years later, we need to be really good at from a, from a digital perspective? Yeah, I would argue my first 90 days were, you know, focused first and foremost on building a team that could actually deliver the the steep deadlines we had. It, it, you know, we the clash of culture between Salesforce and United Way was terrific to manage. On one side you had the United Way culture which was more conservative and, you know, little less risk averse with Salesforce which was hey, you know, we can we can run in days and hours not, you know, we don't, you know, United Way plans by the season, Salesforce by the week. So part of my job initially was making sure that we had the right people in the right roles like Anne, we're grateful for her service and others that really understood the, the work ahead of us. The, the other thing that was really critical was to get the local United Ways to understand the value proposition, to understand the, what was you know, necessary from a engagement side, really doing a lot of paving the road. I would argue that there's probably lots of things we could have done better in the first year of the implementation. And I think that's, that's a lesson learned. Maybe we can do a whole, we can do a whole lesson learned on digital transformation of things we identified that, gosh, if we had to start over again, what we do differently, we certainly would. But for the most part, I would, I'd argue that it's a process for United Way that um, hasn't been perfect, but it's, it's, it's a relationship with Salesforce has been so instrumental because it's allowed us to, without it, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have moved. It's my personal opinion. It really put, deadlines and uh, a sense of urgency that we had to, we had to shift the organization. So it drove a whole set of consequential impacts. It made us uh, improve how we do customer support. It, it made us deliver, uh, rethink how we deliver corporate solutions. It created a, it resulted in a social enterprise, a company we had to uh, build to do content management and content uh, creation. It just spurred a whole set of actions that wouldn't have happened if we hadn't done it this way. So I think for us, I think for, for my colleagues out in the world doing digital transformation, it's it's about being persistent, about being patient, and about being exceptionally agile to learning, assuming that most of your going in assumptions are going to be incorrect and need adjustment and not have ego in the way of making those adjustments as necessary. That, that's my view. Anne may have a different view of the first 90 days, but it was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. And let's get, let's get your take on it, and then we'll go back to some of those lessons learned. Yeah, I think... You know, for for United Way, we have traditionally, you know, we don't do anything until we've had it completely buttoned down. Absolute perfection. We won't start without perfection. And so what we're learning is that you, you have to start, you've got to iterate, you've got to do it again and again and again. And you can start with, you know, start with a feature and then and then build on it. You don't have to wait for the end uh, ideal solution because it's changing so quickly. So I think that that was one of the big uh, shifts for us as uh, culturally, you know, and working with Salesforce.org that is rapid and fast and and you know very satisfied with this is good, you know. So we we struggled with that I think a lot in the beginning. We're we're much better at it now than we were two years ago. We're a lot more comfortable with. Uh, let's start and learn and iterate rather than waiting for the 
perfect. Yeah, that's a great insight. You know, sometimes perfect is definitely the enemy of great in that in that respect. Any other lessons learned for the CIOs and CTOs that are kind of going through a similar transformation where they're where they're, you know, just starting out with, you know, implementing a new technology that's a business-wide kind of transformation? I think our model is probably more challenging than most because if we had command and control of local markets, it'd probably be a lot easier for us to dictate, hey, you know, you got to have this person and these resources and you got to follow the cookbook. But having one where you're, you're only, can, you can only influence um, your colleagues in the field, I would argue that I would have put a lot more formal change management in earlier. And I think the last thing I'd say is that there were things that I would have advocated for probably earlier in the process than later. I think um, having more of a more data architects early on in the process would have been helpful. I think um, uh, really understanding the technical architecture that we really wanted future state would have been would have been more advantageous. And then I think last but least, um, I think that there were you know areas of of setting the the expectations around the content service delivery. I thought I think if we had been earlier on on how we actually bring and position our products to market, I think it would have been helpful as well. But these are all, in hindsight, things you go back and say, well, that's, those sound pretty obvious. But when you're in the middle of a digital transformation, I think they don't, they're not obvious ad indicators. Um, you're in the middle of um, driving a, you know, you talked about it, Ian, right on, that we have been evolving and transforming for 130 years. But the pressure is real for you when you're transforming that the, the future of the organization is on your back. So it, it can feel like a lot of pressure, and that allows you sometimes, uh, that can impact your ability to stop, look around, and say, oh, you know, what do we need to do differently? You know, my favorite, favorite, Ferris Bueller quote is, you know, life moves pretty fast. If you don't look around once in a while, you may miss it. And I think that applies to digital transformation that you need to stop, periscope up in the journey, uh, let your ego go and say, okay, how's this really going? Um, and am I making adjustments as a leader to make this work better? That's a hard thing to do. Yeah, it is, especially when you want to build the you know, the base layer, like you don't want to build your house on sand, right? So you're doing all these things that are a lot of change that feel like for the sake of change, maybe to the end end users that don't realize like all the, all the things that you'll be able to do down the road. Um, but you have to have that baseline layer of technology to support those folks. And I thought it was really interesting that you said, you know, having those disparate groups of people that you can't kind of directly proverbially poke in the chest and say, hey, you have to do this. I would, I would argue that there's, uh, there's probably a lot of CIOs who feel that way, even though when, they, when they are in their organization, it, regardless of whether or not they fall under their organization and, and you have to do this versus you don't. I mean, I think that that's part of the thing with any type of transformation in general is people are going to be, you know, not want to do something the new way or most people aren't. But the other thing is, like when you're implementing a technology, so much of it is like this, where the early returns are are a lot of times for the leadership. Like it's so you can see your organization better, and that really doesn't have a direct impact on like the end user right away. It just will impact it over time, you know. So those those early wins and bringing those people in and and asking them questions is so critical. But it's a it's a tough part. We agree fully. <laughs> well, and we're also bringing our corporate partners along on right. a change journey as well. So we're also we're trying to change how we operate as United Way, but a lot of our corporate partners are also trying to change <laughs> their organizations and how how they're approaching this kind of work. So we're all going through it together, and sometimes we're further ahead, and sometimes our corporate partners are further ahead, and, and so that's always a little bit of a of a dance there Absolutely as right. well. Absolutely right. Yeah, no, that it's it's a great point. And I think, um, you know, I think that that's where, you know, kind of that B to B to C kind of model ends up becoming apparent is when the companies that you work with that that the end person who wants to have the impact uh, can feel really far away, right? It's like you know, hey, the uh, employee at at Kellogg that wants to, and and they're even a partner, but like the employee at Kellogg that wants to, you know, find a new uh, work at the the senior dog center down the street uh, and volunteer their time, right? Like that's what they're focused on doing. So you're so many levels, you know, removed away from that kind of experience that you need to be able to to allow that organization to to do the things that it does. Are there any things that you kind of looking back 
that you'd say like, well, we really nailed this part of it or, you know, this specific thing we did really, really well. <laughs> We're staring at each other. <laughs> I think, I think there's a few things that we did well. We found uh, local United Ways that were really willing to to jump in, even though they didn't know exactly what it was going to mean or what it would take, but they were willing to put themselves out there. So I think that that was a success finding finding those champions. Um, yeah, that's a great one. Yeah, I think I think also you know partnering with Salesforce, we we chose an organization that knows how to do the technology piece. So we're really building on a strong foundation there, not only with Philanthropy Club, but with all our back of house systems as well. So I think that, that that is something that we did well. I think as we've also brought in some of the best talent that are both from local United Ways and, and from outside. So we didn't, we're looking for the best people who know this space and can help bring the organization along. So I think you know, we've hit it there on with some of the hires that William has done. Yeah, I think we, I think Anna's right. I think the other thing I'd add is that our, our digital content is 10 times better than it was um, two years ago. I feel like um, we also have some platforms we didn't have two years ago that are actually starting to bear fruit um, in terms of how we distribute and manage um, content, how we manage our customers. Um, the last thing I'd say is I think we've done pretty well in the last two years of modernizing our offerings to our corporate clients in a way that you know, really does show value. I, I use the example of Lyft or Kellogg's or UPS, where we've really been fortunate to rethink and get out of the box of just a traditional campaign to one where it's, what's the value to the business? You know, how do we help Lyft with their business through philanthropic engagement? And so for us, it's been really exciting to see those partnerships evolve from, hey, we show up and it's all about United Way and our campaign to one where we show up and say, hey, you know, United Way can be... Um, really great about improving your brand, your employee retention, your recruitment efforts, even revenue. You know, there's significant statistics that companies that are, you know, purposeful are profitable uh, and more profitable, frankly. So I'm, I'm probably most proud of those, those kind of relationships where we've demonstrated. And really, at the end of the day, it's made, to Anne's point, made the world a better place. It's actually resulted in, you know, we've even saved lives with the Human Trafficking Center and things we've done with UPS. And it's those partnerships that are, and again, anchored in the digital transformation because it's, it's not really a digital transformation. I should say this carefully. It's really a business transformation. It's, it's, digital is just one aspect of it. It's, it's changing United Way's brand from one that is known for their campaigns and their, the way we show up and how we show up to one where United Way is surprising our partners by offering new value and new depth in how we, how we go to market. That to me is, I'm exceptionally proud of that, that work we've done the last few years. Well, and I actually wanted to talk about a few of the featured programs that you all do. And like, you're totally right that it's the business transformation piece. And we wanted to talk about all the digital stuff because, you know, that's our audience of CIOs and CTOs and, and, and all the technology leaders that we, we have are trying to figure that out. And the impact at the end, the, the light at the end of the tunnel is things like, you know, United Way joining the fight to end human trafficking uh, and modern slavery. Um, you know, myfreetaxes.org, uh, your 211 program, you know, all these cool, really industry leading programs that now when you have the technology, like, again, you were doing those before you had kind of the technology backbone. But now that you have that, the way that you can look at data and those type of things has can fundamentally change you know, the way forward. And I think that that's a super exciting thing for someone like me listening to this of, of, of just how technology can help shape new initiatives. No, I think we're clearly in the community impact business. And so what's exciting is that, um, you know, these new technologies like Salesforce Philanthropy Cloud only enable us to inspire, inform, and activate people, you know, differently. So for us, it's you know, we have our two-on-one program and, and it's a great example of, of innovative impact in the digital age is that, you know, Lyft is a digitally enabled native company and they, through our, with our two-on-one where people can call for help, we identified a quarter million incidents every year where people cannot get to the veterans affairs or the, the job interview or the shelter because of lack of transportation. So it's a beautiful thing when we work with Lyft that they provided a certain number of rides through two and one and our operators didn't feel helpless that they couldn't help the person at the line and the line and the driver for Lyft feels like they're working for a company that actually, actually 
cares for the community. So it's a triple win. And then what's exciting about that is that you can take those stories and harness them into digital stories and put them through our channels and really engage people. And I believe in the power of the individual. You look at the power of one individual who is inspired and motivated by change, the change they can drive in the world today, the Greta Thunbergs, the world that suddenly recognize they have a voice, they have power, and they can actually do something to make the world better. That's the power of United Way. Yeah. And to to look at that, you know, an example of this is um, back in 2019, every 2.3 minutes, someone from Minnesota calls 211 seeking help for themselves or a person in need. Like there is so much that is happening. And if you're not able to capture that data and use things like AI and all of these tools, then, you know, it's just not going to be as impactful as it could be. And like, we know that people need these services. And that's kind of what I was talking about, you know, at the top of the show with this, like the blending of like the physical world and, you know, leveraging technology and having partnerships with people like Lyft and Starbucks and all those type of organizations that do something really well and have a physical presence that you can layer on technology to have impact. And then at the end of the day, like, track that impact and you know and then the next step of that is using things like ai to using predictive analysis using things to say hey you know we always get a lot of two on one calls on you know whatever it is 4th of july or something like that or the you know the day after labor day cuz a lot of people are applying for jobs or or whatever it is like that stuff really you can you can you can make a huge impact by by looking at that data is there any stuff like what are you excited about for for the future of technology and and other things that you're looking at? I'm excited by all of it coming together. So when we're talking about, you know, philanthropy cloud and our CRM project that we're doing and how we can really harness all of this data so that we can make a difference. So it's it's bringing all the pieces together. So we we've, we've been working on a number of fronts and we're really just tying it all in so that, you know, when you talk about the 211, we can predict where there's going to be an issue. We can call people to action through the platforms that we have so that they can intervene before that becomes a more intense situation. So I think, you know, for us, it's that ability to predict, to respond, to engage people uh, where they are and, and where it's actually needed, not where we think it might be needed, but where our data is telling us it's needed. Yeah, I'll build on that. I think the nonprofit sector as a whole is largely inefficient. You could argue is not as effective as it could be. So the changes we're looking at that are really exciting are what Ann talked about, the predictive capability. But I'd also say the, the ability to refine and, and develop solutions that are, that are actually more effective in solving some of the problems. And so building awareness on the public policy side. You know, we're, we're seeing some pretty historical trends now that are, that are deeply disturbing. We, you know, have the highest inequality gap. In, in history in the United States, it's not getting better in terms of the middle class uh, strengthening and, and uh, we're not moving people economically up to a level of safety. You know, the, the average American citizen, a $500 unexpected expense in their budget can put people on the street, um, can really cause a disruption. So for us, it's about, you know, can we actually, can we actually shift government, public policy, companies and other nonprofits to really reevaluate and position solutions for that all of us can win. And we really believe that. I, I, I think that's, again, the, the fundamental for United Way and leveraging this technology is to help everybody win. We want to see better, stronger companies. We want to stry- see informed and uh, good public policy it doesn't doesn't have an unintended consequences. And we want to see um, our strong agency partners uh, really delivering great solutions. And finally, we want to see the, the ecosystem of community really strong. So I think when you think about technology at the bear of that, it's, as Ann said, it's predictive, it's evaluative, it's informative, it's inspiring, uh, and it allows uh, an accessibility into the public, into community service that I think is allows people to realize their full potential. All right, let's get into our lightning round questions. These questions are fast and easy. Just like the Salesforce Customer 360 platform, I mean, I don't need to tell you all about Salesforce because you know, but for our listeners who don't know, Salesforce Customer 360 Platform is the number one cloud platform for digital transformation of every experience. You can go to salesforce.com slash platform to learn more. And I highly recommend you do. Lightning round questions. William and Ann, are you ready? Yeah, sure. William, we'll start with you. What app on your phone is the most fun? 
Uh, I actually love the Starbucks app. Um, one, I use it every day, but it, it promotes me, promotes the deals. It, it knows me and it promotes the things I want. And uh, the second one I love, love, love is Duolingo. I'm trying to learn Spanish, uh, which is not going well, but Duolingo makes it incredibly fun, interactive. And the last one, I, got, I give you three. Salesforce Philanthropy Cloud mobile app is beautiful. Love it. And I use it for all my philanthropic engagement. And what about you? <laughs> So I'm going to give a Canadian answer. I'm going to say Tim Hortons is my most commonly used app <laughs> on my phone. Um, of course, Philanthropy Cloud Mobile. Uh, and I have a, a neat little app called Hey Brian that helps me with uh, to identify people to come and help fix things in my home. And what is your hidden talent or passion? Uh, my hidden talent is I, I think I'm a decent writer and like to write inspiring pieces and um, get people motivated by through through writing. And I'm passionate about writing and I'm passionate about the, the causes and, and moving people out of, making people realize they actually have more power than they think they do to, to solve problems. I think that's probably my biggest passion. I would say that I am uh, passionate about my work and I am passionate about being in the outdoors in clean, fresh air. Last question. What technology or thing are you most excited about for the future of technology? I think the, I would say the power of uh, predictive analytics and AI. I'd actually say I get most excited about technologies like blockchain, which allow more fidelity and giving, maybe radical, but I think the days of, you know, can we actually get financial resources to the end user experiencing the need faster and more effectively would be something I get really excited about. Awesome. That's it. That's all we got. Thanks so much for coming on every one of our listeners obviously should check out United Way. Uh, if your organization is, is not partnered, um, check them out. Uh, any, uh, any final thoughts? Well, Ian, we're so grateful for this opportunity to talk and share what we've learned. And we, um, we really want to thank, again, our partner Salesforce for their tremendous um, collaboration. And we look forward to working with anybody out there it's in your listening group. If they want to think about how to partner philanthropically, we are certainly open for those discussions. Awesome. Thanks so much for hanging out. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks for listening. And now here is Dragana from the Salesforce platform team with our Trailblazer Tuesday segment. Hi everyone, Dragana Boros checking in for yet another segment of Trailblazer Tuesday. Today we have a very interesting guest on the show, Allison Montgomery from Deluxe Corp. Allison, how are you doing? Hello, I'm doing well, thank you. So Allison, I know you have a super interesting role at Deluxe. Can you share with us a little bit about what you do there, what it is that a Deluxe does? Sure. I lead our sales enablement and operations organization where I work with our chief revenue officer, our sales and marketing leadership, and our general management organizations to bring the Deluxe go-to-market strategies to life. This is a newly centralized organization created as part of our transformation strategy, really focused on driving organic growth. Amazing. And I know, Allison, you guys have had a lot to overcome at Deluxe and labor yourself so kind of as this company of companies. Can you talk a little bit about the vast number of acquisitions you've all had and how have you been able to turn this around and become like one unified company? Like where did it all start? It started when Barry McCarthy joined as our CEO. He brought a really strong vision for how we could transform from a company of companies growing through acquisition to a trusted business technology company focused on serving our customers with a strong portfolio of products designed to help them succeed. And so when he came in, he uh, launched this New Day Transformation. And to get started, we brought together some of the top leaders across the company, some of which had never met each other or worked together because we had operated so uh, independently and in a siloed fashion. And as part of this New Day Transformation, the way that we got started is that we thought about what are the, the, the three to five things that would really move the needle for the company. And we built our New Day Transformation around what we called a, a, a series of planks. And those planks evolved around sales, product, efficiency, and culture. It's, it's by no coincidence that sales was first. We, we understood that to, to really serve our customers well, we needed to be really focused on bringing the best of deluxe to them in the most meaningful way and creating a robust sales organization. The second area of products, ensuring that we have uh, products available that help solve our customers' needs and help them where, no matter where they are on their own evolution. 
And then efficiency. What could we do to go from this company of companies that had redundancies and multiple technologies? And how could we take that and reinvest into the company so that our products and our sales engine were top notch? Finally, we knew we needed a really robust sales driven culture. In addition to aligning around a new set of values and updating our people practices, we made every North American employee a shareholder to really drive an employee owner mindset and spirit across the company. I love that, Allison. And I love that you guys really started first with that customer experience because that's so key. And the fact that you then you give everyone a stake in the company just shows that, you know, it's not, it, it's about like all of the stakeholders in this and really make everyone feel like they're a part of making that difference. Can you share with me one implementation or initiative through all of this that you were most passionate about? There's always like that one project that excites us that we're happy to wake up every morning and be like, yes, I can't wait to work on this. As you can imagine, moving from a company of companies to one deluxe, we have a great deal of opportunity to improve process and technology. So while I could talk to you about a lot of areas within our Six Flags technology strategy, I would like to focus on two things we are doing with Salesforce. Not only is Salesforce helping us really understand our customers and how we can best serve them, it's a critical component of our culture. First, we have gone wall to wall with Philanthropy Cloud, which is one more way we are living our brand promise. At Deluxe, we are champions for business so communities thrive. Philanthropy Cloud enables us to effectively engage our employees to serve our communities well. Second, we've created a program called Everyone Sells, which enables all Deluxe employees to identify a lead, whether it's for a small business, a mid-sized company, or the largest enterprises we serve. Those individuals, no matter where they reside in the company, are recognized for the lead and compensated for any closed deal. Everyone Sells is the heartbeat of our sales-driven culture at Deluxe. Wow, what a great way to make everyone feel connected to the customer. It's like you're in IT one day, and next thing you know, you're getting a sales compensation check. What a world we live in. The IT role really, truly is evolving as we know it. What are some results and impacts that you guys have seen with this program? Like, what are things that just make you go, wow? Some of it is just the sheer volume of leads that we've unlocked within the company. It's amazing to give our employees the ability, no matter where they reside in the organization, to uncover an opportunity for us to serve our customers well. In addition, we've been able to show one more way that the power of the Salesforce platform can help us bring things to life. We were able to very quickly stand up this program using communities. Wow, Allison, the sheer impact of this is wild. I cannot imagine. I mean, we all dream of having all these leads. So like to see the lead count just go up like that exponentially must have been amazing for your guys' sales teams in general. So what's next on the horizon for Deluxe? What can we expect to see in the rest of this 2020? You know, you can expect to see us continue to be focused on our customers. We're so fortunate to serve over 4,000 financial institutions, hundreds of consumer brands, 4.5 million small business customers. Deluxe has such a passion for helping them succeed that you will continue to see us focus on that while we're driving our internal transformation. And Allison, there's this question we ask everyone on the show, uh, and I'd love to ask you to give us your best tip, whether it be on career advice, whether it be on Salesforce implementations, or really rolling out anything. Can you share with us just one tip to live by that we should all be making sure we're doing every single day? My advice is to be agile. The world is changing so fast that we cannot use traditional planning and processes to understand the problems which need to be solved or the jobs that need to be done. To be relevant to our customers, we have to change our paradigm, be extremely flexible, and think about what we can do to help them succeed today. This advice also applies personally. As someone who's a bit of a planner and likes to map everything out, this can be extremely hard. But some of my greatest opportunities have come when I was open to a path I didn't design and agile enough to follow where it led. For example, at Deluxe, I had an opportunity to step out of sales enablement and operations and spend a year working for our CIO. There, I worked with him and his leadership team to develop strategy and bring customer centricity to the forefront of the organization. That experience grew me in so many ways from how I approach a business problem to the way I think about technology, all because I was agile and open to a new possibility. I love that. And especially in today's day and age and with everything currently going on, like being open and being willing to take on whatever life throws your way can make such an impact, such a huge positive impact down the line. 
Allison, thank you so much for joining us. It truly has been a pleasure. Hope to have you on again in the future. Thank you. IT Visionaries is created by the team at mission.org and brought to you by the Salesforce Customer 360 platform, the number one cloud platform for digital transformation of every experience. Build connected experience, empower every employee, and deliver continuous innovation with the customer at the center of everything you do. Learn more at salesforce.com slash platform.